After publishing these two tutorials on using AI coding assistance to develop applications, several people requested a dedicated tutorial on setting up the development environment that allows us to leverage AI coding assistance. So in this video, we're going to step through the process of setting that environment up. I've broken this down into chapters, so if you already have a particular tool installed, you can just skip to the section that you need help with. And you don't need to install everything all at once. You can start with the API keys and the tools that are required for a particular tutorial or a task at hand or your particular tech stack and come back here later if you need to. By the end of this tutorial, you'll have a development environment ready to go to start building apps using AI coding assistance. We're going to start with what I'll refer to as the core components. These are the technologies and tools that I recommend you install regardless of your programming language. Second, we'll get into optional tools. Now, these are the tools you may or may not need depending on your target programming language and some other factors. For example, if you're not planning to develop Java apps and you're not going to follow a tutorial that uses Java, you're not going to need the Java components right now. You can come back here if you find you need Java later on. In this video, we'll be installing everything into a Windows environment. Now, I realize that many of you may be working on Macs or in a Linux environment, maybe WSL. I apologize to you in advance. However, I'm guessing that most aspiring and new developers are working in a Windows environment, and this is likely the audience that can benefit the most from this kind of assistance. Having said that, if I can assist you with Mac or Linux, please let me know in the comments. And here are the core tools we'll install. Python, Ader, Git, VS Code, the Python extension pack for VS Code, and Code AI. And the optional tools are the extension pack for Java, which is a VS Code extension, and Node.js. Okay, we're gonna start with arguably the most important tool for any AI-related development, Python. So if you're on Windows, there are two easy methods to install Python. The easiest is to go to the Microsoft Store, search for Python. Now I'm going to recommend that you install version 3.11 only because certain Python libraries and applications aren't yet fully supporting 3.12, at least as of a few months ago when I last tried this. So select 3.11. Now I already have it installed, so it's not going to show me what I wanna show you. So I'm just gonna, for demonstration purposes, select 3.10. You'll see an install button. All you need to do is click install and you'll have Python installed here. Again, make sure it's 3.11 though. Okay. There's another method of installing Python on Windows that is almost as easy, and that is going to the python.org slash downloads page, scrolling down until you see the 3.11 release, and clicking on download. That will take you to the download page for the installers. Now you click on the Windows installer under files. That's gonna download this file. We're going to click on that file, and now you're just going to select install now, which I'm not going to do now because it will overwrite my existing Python installation. But all you will do is click on install now and it will guide you right through the process. You can just select all of the defaults. Now, once the installer is finished, you need to test and make sure that the installation went well. So we're going to go to Windows command prompt and we're going to type Python minus minus version and you should see Python 3.11 dot whatever the most current version was that you installed. So if you see this, you're golden, you have Python installed, it's in your environment working correctly. So next up is Git, which is a version control tool that we human developers and also Ader use to record changes to our source code as we make them. So the way that we can install Git is to go to git-scm.com slash downloads, click on download for Windows, Click on 64-bit Git for Windows Setup, which will download the installer. When it's done downloading, open that file. That's going to start the wizard. You can accept the license agreement. Proceed through the wizard. You can select all of the defaults. That's fine. I'm not going to do this because it would overwrite my Git, but this is very intuitive. Follow the wizard. You'll be good. So once installer finishes, let's verify that Git is installed correctly. So go find a command prompt, open it, and type this command, git space dash dash version. And we see that Git is installed. 
Now, Git also comes with a terminal program called Git Bash. And when I'm working in a Windows environment, in any of the tutorials, like in VS Code, you'll almost always see me working in the Git Bash terminal. So let's go ahead and just do the same thing in the Git Bash terminal. Find Git Bash. And we're going to type the same command just to verify that all is well. Git space minus minus version, and we see that we're good. Okay, so we needed Python installed before we can install Ader. So now that we got Python, let's go ahead and install Ader. Let's go back to a git bash terminal or a command prompt. You can also do this in command prompt. What we're going to do here is I like to create virtual environments for most tools and for most of my Python projects. What that does is it allows me to separate all of the dependencies that get installed into an isolated environment so it doesn't start to kind of uh, corrupt the rest of my global Python environment. So what we do to do that is type Python minus M V E N V V E N V. That's the command to tell Python to create a virtual environment. And then we're going to name it. So in our case, we're going to be installing Ader into it. So we'll call it, it can be anything you want to that you can remember. Let's call it Ader V E N V. I already have one that by this name, so I'm going to call it two. So it's going to go ahead and create a virtual environment for me. So now that I have a virtual environment, I need to activate that virtual environment because if I run Python commands now, I'm still in the main global Python environment. So to do that, I'll type source, and then I'm going to type the name of the environment that's just created. There'll be a directory here named ader-bnv2. Inside that, there's a directory called scripts. Inside that, there's a batch file called activate. So I'm gonna type source, name of the environment slash script slash activate okay so now you can see that i have my new environment activated so there's a command python tool called pip and that's what manages our installation and our dependencies of our libraries so i'm going to take a look and see what libraries are currently in this environment installed in this environment all right, so currently minimal setup tools, that's it. So what we need to do is we need to get Ader and all of its dependencies installed. So what to do that, we're gonna say pip install Ader chat. Okay, so this is installing Ader and all of its dependencies inside our newly created isolated Python environment. This is gonna take a bit, so I'll be back when it's complete. Okay, so it looks like Ader finished installation. Let's test and make sure that we have access to Ader tool by typing Ader. Minus, minus help. And if all is working, you should actually see the output of the help command for Ader. And there we go. Okay, Ader's good to go, Git's good to go, and Python is good to go. Let's move on. Okay, next up is VS Code, or Visual Studio Code. So what we'll do is we'll go to code.visualstudio.com slash download. And you'll see the installers for the various operating systems. Click on Windows. The Windows installer is going to download. Now when it's finished downloading, open this file. You're going to accept the agreement. Click Next. Now, what you're going to do from here is, again, just accept all the defaults. That's just fine. Work through the wizard, and we'll have VS Code installed. I'm not going to do that because I don't want to overwrite my installation. Now, once the VS Code installer completes, Let's go ahead and try to find it and open it. In your Windows search bar, type VS Code, and you should see Visual Studio Code. Let's go ahead and launch that, and you should see a screen that looks something like this. If you do, you're good. So if you're gonna be doing any sort of AI development, you're almost certainly going to be developing some Python apps. Now we installed Python on the Windows operating system already, so we have it available on the command line. However, in VS Code, there's a lot of additional tools that can, you can use to make your development a whole lot easier inside the Visual Studio Code IDE. So what we're gonna do is go find the extensions button on the left-hand side, click on extensions. In the search box, type Python. And we're gonna be looking for the Python extension pack, which basically is a bundle of tools that you can install inside of VS Code to help you with your Python, Python development. So click on install, and we'll wait for that to finish. Okay, 
So now you have a bunch of Python tools installed inside of your IDE. So we've already installed one AI coding assistant, Ader, which is an AI coding assistant that works inside of the terminal. Now we're gonna install another AI coding assistant that works inside of Visual Studio Code. So still in the extensions marketplace, type Kodi AI. Select Kodi AI assistant and type in, or click on install. And we'll wait for this to install. All right, so Kodi is installed inside of VS Code. Let's go test it out. So now you should see this sort of winky, winking face <laughs> icon on your left-hand side in VS Code. Click on that, and let's go ahead and click on the new chat option. So this is bringing up a new AI chat, and Claude 3.5 Sonnet LLM is selected. Let's go ahead and make sure everything's working. Explain to me how LLMs work in less than three sentences. All right, so Code AI is working. We'll go on to our next tool. So that does it for what I consider your primary tool set up to get you started with AI assisted coding. As I said in the beginning, there's an optional section here. If you're not gonna be doing any Java development right now, you're not gonna be doing any Node.js development, you can skip this next section. If you are though, go back to your extensions. We're gonna search for Java now. Now we're looking for a Java extension pack, select that. We're going to install that. And we'll wait for that to install. Okay, so now similar to the Python tooling that we installed, we have similar tooling for the Java programming language installed inside of our VS Code IDE. Now our last tool, and again, this is optional, if you're going to be doing Node.js development, um, which includes React, Next.js, and so forth, you're gonna need this. So what we're doing is going to nodejs.org slash en slash download slash prebuilt dash installer and select download Node.js. And once that completes, select on the installer. It's gonna bring up the setup wizard and you accept the license agreement and proceed. And once again, just select all of the defaults. I'm not gonna do that because I already have Node.js installed on my system. Once the Node installer completes, let's check and make sure that it installed correctly. So go and open either a git bash terminal or a command prompt and type this command, node space dash dash version. Okay, looks like we installed and we're good. We've installed all of our tools so far, but anytime you're working with any AI coding assistant, it's always gonna require access to a large language model or an LLM. Now the two most popular large language models for coding purposes today are Anthropic's Cloud 3.5 and OpenAI's GPT-40. So we're gonna need API keys for each of these. So what we're gonna do is Go to console.anthropic.com slash login. Now this assumes you don't, that you don't already have an account with Anthropic. I'm gonna click on Google. I'm going to select an account that I don't have registered with Anthropic right now, just so I can show you what's gonna happen. So I select that, continue. Now it's gonna ask me for my name. And I certify I'm at least 18. All right, I'm gonna say coding the future, CTF. I'm just gonna say education, optional, create account. All right, so here we are, we've created an account. So now it lets us get started with $5 in free credit, so we're good to go. We can use up to $5 worth of API calls. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to click on get API keys. That takes us to the console.anthropic.com slash settings slash keys. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna create a new key. You call this anything you want to, this is just a sort of like a, a name for you to remember. I'll just call it my key for now. Create the key. Now at this point, you're gonna to wanna to copy and save off this key to a safe place because this is what's gonna let you make calls to the Claude 3.5 large language model. So copy that before you close this dialog, save it to a safe place, 
and then select close. Now, whenever you're using any OpenAI model, including GPT-40 or GPT-3.5, you're also gonna need an API key, just like you had for Anthropic, but for OpenAI. So go to the platform.openai.com slash docs slash overview and click on sign up. Again, I'm assuming that you don't already have an account. If you do, you can skip, of course, these steps. Click on sign up. I'm gonna click on Google. Again, I'm gonna create, I'm gonna use an account that I know I don't have registered with OpenAI. Continue. And then it's gonna ask me again about myself. My birthday. Okay, so now I'm registered with OpenAI. Okay, now that I'm registered, I'm gonna go up to the right-hand corner. Again, these UIs change from time to time to settings. Click on settings. I'm gonna go down to the billing menu option. All right, so unlike Anthropic, I don't believe that OpenAI anymore is giving any free credits when you sign up. So you're going to actually need to click on add payment details and then navigate through the, the payment options, add a credit card. So you can just add the minimal amount for now. You can always add more later. I think the process is pretty intuitive, so I'll let you take it from here. Okay, just so you can see what the billing page is gonna look like once you add a credit card to it, I logged out of my temporary account that I was using for the demo and back into my main account. And you can see here, I've added a card and I have a balance of $13.31 left. Now what I need to do is create an API key just like I did over in Anthropic. So I click on dashboard up at the top right and I go down to API keys on the left side. And here I find the create secret key button. I click on that. Again, just like with Anthropic, you can call it anything you want. I say create secret key. And again, just like with Anthropic, you need to save this value to a safe place before you close this dialog. So do that, and now you have an API key for both Anthropic, so you can use the Claude models, and with OpenAI, so you can use the GPT models. Of course, I plan to revoke both of those API keys before this video goes live. I hope you found this video helpful in getting your AI development environment set up. If you haven't watched the tutorials on using AI coding assistance to develop applications that I mentioned in the beginning of this video, you may want to take a look at those next. If you've already watched those tutorials but got stuck on something related to your environment, you may want to revisit those tutorials now. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a like and subscribe. I'm Tim Kitchens, coding the future with you, and I look forward to seeing you in future videos.